Hi, welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for all North Carolina and South Carolina students sponsored by the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers and StriveCan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your answers to our presentations at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out all of the, all of the sessions that are provided at the full schedule at cacrao.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website. Again, cacrao.org, cacro.org. I'd now like to turn, turn it over to our presenters. Awesome. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, this panel is small, medium, and large, finding your fit, and it features University of North Carolina Pembroke, North Carolina State, and Elizabeth City State University. So thank you so much for joining us. So what is a good college fit? A good college fit is when a college meets a student's needs and wants academically, socially, and financially. So we're gonna start off with that academic fit. So some important questions you should ask yourself when looking at a college are, does the institution have the major or majors I'm interested in pursuing? What about my class size? So class size can be very um, important. Um, do you learn better in a big classroom setting or a small setting? While large colleges are known for lectures and small colleges are known for small classes, that's not always the case. So you should always find out what their average class size is. In addition, large lectures, at least for introductory classes, can be found at small colleges. So these are important questions to ask. What's your largest class size? What's my average class size? And then what kind of academic resources are available to me while I'm at that institution, whether it's tutoring, career services, um, your ability to study in the evenings at the library. You need to make sure that your college offers the options that fit your lifestyle. Awesome, so welcome everyone. My name is Courtney Sola and I am an assistant director here in NC State's Office of Admissions. Um, so today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about social fit and the importance of social fit as you are learning and researching about other institutions and eventually where you'll wanna pursue your bachelor's degree. Um, so social fit is such an important aspect of where you choose to pursue your education because you want that institution to feel like home. You wanna make sure that it provides the appropriate social opportunities opportunities for you so you can really flourish as a student and really get involved in the community and make deep ties to that university. So when it comes to the social fit of an institution, definitely do your research beforehand so you know what you're going into. But a couple of things you should be looking at, of course, is the student activities. So let's say you were involved in activities in high school or at your previous institution, whether it be a community college or a different four-year institution, and you were involved in activities that you want to pursue as you continue your education do a bit of research into the institutions you're considering to make sure that they offer those student activities that you're already invested in and want to pursue. Um, or if you're not really sure what you want to pursue, but you have different areas of interest, make sure that that university has student activities and clubs and organizations that support those areas of interest. Um, that will only continue to enhance on your undergraduate experience, but then those are great items to add to your resume. So whether it be certain clubs, organizations, community service work, um, as you're you know, looking for jobs after graduation or even preparing to go to a professional school, um, those clubs and activities can really be conducive in making you a lot more versatile and really desirable amongst employers and and other graduate institutions. Um, when it comes to social fit, definitely look at a campus's diversity. Of course, you know that diversity is all encompassing. So know if that diversity is important to you, do a bit of research into your institution to see if that institution meets your diversity needs. Um, and if they are working hard to create um, a very inclusive community for all of their students. And then last but not least, when it comes to social fit, check out the location of the institutions that you are interested in, because essentially that's going to be your next home for the next however many years you choose to stay there. 
Um, so some campuses, you know, are located in big cities, some are located in more rural or urban areas. So definitely do some soul searching to figure out what type of location you're going to thrive in the most. Um, if weekend activities and being in a big city is important to you, make sure you find institutions that offer those opportunities. Or if you want to be in more of a rural city, definitely look into opportunities or institutions that may offer that setting for you because that's only going to enhance your social experience at any university that you may be interested in. Okay, so good afternoon. My name is Darius Uhr and I'm from Elizabeth City State University where I serve as a director of admissions. I'm gonna start off talking a little bit about financial fit um, and about a few other considerations. And then my colleague, Ms. Sherry Franks will talk more about Elizabeth City State University. And so when you think about financial fit, because ideally that's one of the things that everybody more or less are concerned about because of a few other determining factors that you have to factor in. Um, cost of attendance being the very first thing. So you definitely wanna make sure that you look at and weigh all the financial aid options available at each college or institution. Um, all colleges are required to have a net price calculator on their website. ECSU has one as well as the um, institutions that my colleagues represent on this call as well. So be sure that you review that. That offers a lot of information, a lot of straightforward information based on uh, your respective financial situation, so to speak. Affordability would be the next point to consider. You wanna submit your FAFSA or your free application for federal student aid and understand um, your expected family contribution. That is what determines your financial aid award allotment at um, any institution that you are interested in enrolling. So definitely make sure you submit that FAFSA. As a reminder, October the 1st is priority deadline, um, priority date, not priority, opening date. So it is open now. You wanna make sure that you get it submitted well in advance um, to any institution that you are considering and enrolling. Many colleges do try to meet the full need of every student. However, some families may still need to cover any out-of-pocket costs. So make sure your institution is affordable for you um, as well as for your family. Scholarships, last but definitely not least, each institution is going to offer a variety of scholarships um, for all of our students. So you want to make sure, like I said, get your FAFSA done early, Make sure that you review the scholarship offerings um, and also reach out to the financial aid offices as well and research whatever scholarships may be available to you um, at, at each institution, but as well as also any local scholarships that may be available. So definitely keep that in mind. A few other considerations to keep in mind as well um, is you want to institution size. As you realize that by the title of this presentation, we are <laughs> that's one of the things that would vary amongst the three of us. Housing options. Um, housing options vary as well from one institution to another. Whether it's um, a single room or family uh, housing setting, you want to keep those in mind. Religious affiliations of any respective institution that you are interested, as well as athletics. That plays a, um, can play a major role if that is something that you're interested in, in pursuing or participating in at an institution. Research and career opportunities are something that definitely prepare you for life after graduation, as well as internship and also employment opportunities. So definitely keep in mind, most of our institutions are gonna offer some type um, of internship or um, research or career fairs throughout the academic year. So that's some of the things that we will have in common, but you also wanna consider that for institutions that you are interested, as well as transportation, dining options, study abroad and honors programs. But this is just a tip of the iceberg. There's so many more. So just keep in mind, whatever is important to you should be important in your search for your institution of enrollment. And now my colleague, Ms. Sherry Franks. Hello, I'm Sherry Franks. I'm the Assistant Director of Transfer Admissions here at Elizabeth City State University. I'm going to present on a perfect fit for a small institution. Um, here at Elizabeth City State University, our total enrollment is a little over 2,000 students, um, which means our student to professor ratio is maybe 14 to one. With this, you're getting a professor that knows you by name and may be a little bit more engaged with you on a personal level. <laughs> so they may know that you didn't attend class today or may know you on a more personal level. 90% um, of our students receive financial aid. Um, so with us being a part of the NC Promise program, it makes it more affordable for 
our students with tuition only um, at $500 per semester um, for in-state students and tuition only $2,500 per semester for out-of-state students. Um, ECSU offers a wide variety of majors, um, anywhere from aviation science to biology, computer science. Um, you can always apply at www.ecsu.edu backslash apply. Um, ECSU um, right now is the only university in North Carolina that offers a aviation science degree. Um, we have a little over 30 undergrad, I'm sorry, 27 undergraduate degrees and four graduate degree programs. Uh, with our NC Promise, with that, it includes the $500 in-state tuition and $2,500 out-of-state tuition. Um, with this, there are three UNC schools that offer this, um, Elizabeth City State, um, UNC Pembroke, and Devil State University. Um, as Mr. Ewell was stating, it is time to go ahead and get your FAFSAs in and apply. Um, as far as transfer students, you need at least, for Elizabeth City State, you need at least a 2.0 GPA and 24 transferable credit hours. If you have under the 24 transferable credit hours, you can submit your high school transcript to for consideration. Sherry. Thank you. Um, hello again. My name is Nancy Reading. I'm not sure if I said that earlier. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at UNC Pembroke. Um, and so our mascot is the Brave. So we hope you choose to be a Brave. Um, so I'm just going to go over some kind of interesting information that makes us UNC Pembroke and makes us what we would consider a medium sized institution. Um, so we were founded in 1887 as the Croatan Normal School, um, and our original purpose was to educate American Indian teachers. So we were founded by American Indians for American Indians. Our total enrollment is 8,200 students with an undergraduate class of 6,400. Um, so we offer 41 undergraduate programs. So there's probably something that you're interested in that's offered at UNC Pembroke. Um, and so some of our most popular majors include biology, business, education, and nursing. So we're also considered a very diverse campus and a minority serving institution. Um, so with that um, designation, um, over 60% of our student body are represent various minorities, including American Indian, African Americans, um, Asian Pacific Islanders, and Latino Americans. So um, we also have a small class size of about 20 and a student faculty ratio of 18 to one. Our largest class on our campus, you're gonna find about 60 students. Um, and that's gonna be your larger lecture introductory classes. So as a transfer student, um, you're not really going to be in those classes because you're going to have most of your general education classes out of the way. So you're probably going to be in those 20 or less class sizes. Um, and then the other thing that we offer is 100 plus clubs and organizations and NCAA Division II sports. So we're also a North Carolina Promise Institution, which does make us an affordable option for your education. Um, with our in-state tuition being $1,000 um, for the year, and then our fees are about $2,400, um, and then a room and meal plan, um, and then health insurance. If you already have health insurance, you can request a waiver for that fee. We just require that all students have health insurance. Um, so if you don't, then you're looking at a cost of about 15,000. If you do, then you're looking at closer to 13. Um, if you're an out-of-state student, then you're looking at a cost of about 19,000 um, unless you have health insurance. And so then we're talking about 17. So um, it really does make us afford an affordable option with a lot to offer students. 
The other thing that we offer is we offer a good number of scholarships through our Brave Assist scholarship portal. So um, once you apply to UNC Pembroke and have been accepted, you'll have access to apply for scholarships on the Brave Assist portal. And so you'll complete one application and that application will make you eligible for any of the scholarships that we have available. Um, so you'll wanna make sure that you do that after you apply. And then of course, get your FAFSA in like um, Mr. Yur said, so that you can have all of that out there and that we can give you the most financial aid that we can. Um, if you're interested in attending UNC Pembroke, please go ahead and apply. Our applications are free October 19th through the 30th. Um, so we would love for you to log in and apply today. Thank you. Awesome, thanks Nancy. Um, so we're about halfway through our presentation. So should you have any questions, please do feel free to put them in the Q&A box. Um, they can be questions about all three of our institutions or just our individual institutions. And we are happy to address any questions that you may have. Um, so I'm gonna kick it off with the large institution. Um, so my name is Courtney Sola. Once again, I am from North Carolina State University or NC State as we all know and love. Uh, so once again, I'm representing the large institution on this panel. Um, so a little bit about NC State. Um, so NC State is located in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, Raleigh is the capital city of our state and is also the second largest city within the state of North Carolina. Um, Raleigh has been consistently ranked as one of the best cities to not only live in, but also one of the best cities to work in and also a best city for college students. Um, our location in Raleigh is not only conducive to a really vibrant student experience, but our city of Raleigh really does provide a lot of different social, professional, and research opportunities for our students. And of course, as all of those opportunities are present in our city, they're also present on our campus. Now, NC State is the largest institution in North Carolina, and um, so we are home to over 36,000 students. About 24,000 of those students will be in our undergraduate population, the rest in our graduate programs. And we proudly serve the most amount of North Carolinians in comparison to any other institution within our state. Now, NC State is a research intensive institution. Um, we are one of the two R1 institutions within the state of North Carolina, and we are also located in the Research Triangle Park, um, really making research a big part of our identity here at NC State. And we do encourage that all of our students get involved in research at some point throughout their undergraduate career. Now, speaking of research, NC State Centennial Campus is a nationally acclaimed private, private public research camp campus we're over 70 different corporate, government, and nonprofit partners, who we call our Centennial Partners, actually work alongside all of our research and academic units to produce research for the institution. Um, so Centennial Campus really is a great example of how our professional community and scholar community within Raleigh really integrate and work with our students at our campus on a daily basis. Um, more fun facts about NC State, we're actually ranked number 11th in the nation for undergraduate entrepreneurship. Um, we offer a great entrepreneurship program through our Poole College of Management. And currently we have over 70 different startups and spinoffs started just by NC State student research, attracting a total of $1.7 billion in venture capital. And of course, probably why most of you guys know about NC State is because of our stellar academic programs. And um, so at State, we are home to over 100 different majors that span 10 different academic colleges. Now, yes, we are most notably known as a STEM institution, but I can promise you that we are not STEM exclusive. So that kind of goes back to that academic fit. If you wanna do a STEM program, especially engineering, NC State is a great place for you, but we're not STEM exclusive. So if you have interest in the humanities or social sciences, business, NC State can still be a great university for you. Um, when it comes to our academic colleges, of course, we offer a pretty expansive college of engineering, college of sciences. Um, we were founded as a land grant institution. So we have a wonderful college of agriculture and life sciences. Great Pool College of Management, College of Humanities and Social Sciences, College of Natural Resources, Design, and the largest college of textiles in the entire nation. So once again, not STEM exclusive by any means. And up on our screen, you can actually see some of the top majors amongst our transfer students as they come into NC State. Um, so I can't stress it enough, not all STEM majors are listed. 
So to kind of give you an idea of what that social fit at NC State would look like. Um, so as I mentioned, we are home to over 36,000 students. Um, our average class size at NC State is about 35 students with a student to faculty ratio of about 14 to one. Um, so yes, even though we are a larger institution, we are able to keep it smaller within the classroom. And that's especially as you're delving more into your academic program and your courses are becoming more rigorous. Um, if you're taking some of your general education program, then yes, those classes may be bigger. Um, we do have a few lecture halls on campus that accommodate two or 300 students. Um, but that will be a small handful of classes at NC State. The large majority of your classes, of course, will reflect more of that 835 average class size. Um, when it comes to social opportunities, we do offer over 700 different student organizations for our students to be involved with. Um, that's a great opportunity for our students to make a large campus feel a lot smaller and for you to really find your niche and find your community at NC State. Um, we offer over 200 different study abroad programs, 23 NCAA Division I sports teams. We are also in the ACC, so athletics are alive and well on our campus and definitely a highlight of the student experience. Um, if you are interested in fraternity and sorority life, we do offer 49 Greek lettered organizations and we do offer Air Force, Army and Navy ROTC programs. Now, when it comes to the social fit of our transfer students, um, so each year we enroll about 1,400 transfer students each fall to NC State. Um, so about 20% of our student population actually comes from our transfer population. So it is very common for our students to start their education elsewhere and then transfer into NC State. Um, when it comes to your transition to NC State, we do provide a lot of resources and support services for you. Um, so we do require a transfer student orientation for all of our students to help you um, get adjusted to campus and acclimate to our campus. Um, we offer Wolfpack Welcome Week where all of our student organizations and student resources are available for you to learn more about and join to once again help you find that niche and find that community on our campus. Um, if you are a military affiliated student, we do offer our military and veterans resource center. We offer a great academic success center and our Goodnight scholars program. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities and support services in place to help our transfer students with their transition to our campus. And last but not least, I wanna talk about the financial fit of NC State, because of course we recognize that uh, responsibly financing your education is of the utmost importance. Um, like my colleague said, definitely submit your FAFSA. That is how you will determine your need-based aid from NC State. Um, the FAFSA is currently open and NC State does have a priority deadline of March 1st. So do keep that in mind. Um, at NC State, we are really proud to be recognized um, as one of the best value institutions among US public universities um, and number one for return on investment within the state of North Carolina. Um, so we like to think that when a student really invests in their education at NC State, they reap the benefits um, through that education when it comes to having a fulfilling undergraduate experience and then also employment prospects for our students. Um, now, when it comes to um, funding your education, um, we do offer two different scholarship programs for our transfer students. So we do offer PAC Assist. That is our larger institutional resource for scholarships, um, much like our colleagues at UNCP with Brave Assist. Um, so with PAC Assist, students will just submit one application through PAC Assist. All of our PAC Assist scholarships are need-based, merit-based, and departmental-based. All of our scholarships are contingent upon donor agreements. So each scholarship has different criteria for students for who is going to be eligible for that scholarship. Um, but as long as you apply through PAC Assist, you will automatically become eligible for any scholarship that you may meet the criteria for. And our hope is that year after year, as you progress through your education at NC State, that you will continue to apply through PAC Assist in hopes of earning more and more scholarships each year to help fund your education. Um, now, the next scholarship opportunity that we offer for our transfer students is our Goodnight Scholars Program. Um, so this is our big money scholarship for transfer students. Um, so with our Goodnight Scholars Program, um, it is just for North Carolina residents who come from a low to moderate income background, who are interested in a STEM or STEM education major at NC State, and who has earned their full associate's degree upon enrollment to NC State. 
So that could be your Associates of Arts, Science, or Engineering. You do have to earn that prior to enrollment. And if you meet those criteria, we definitely encourage you to apply. Um, for our Good Night Scholars who are awarded the scholarship, it is a $20,000 scholarship uh, for each year, renewable for up to three years for our transfer students. So once again, big money scholarship that almost covers your entire cost of attendance for one academic year at NC State. Um, so definitely look into that program. In addition to having great monetary incentive, um, our Good Night Scholars program does offer a variety of different pro professional development and social development programming for our students. Um, so another great way to find your niche and find your community on our campus. So um, hopefully you kind of get an idea of, you know, what our it's different institutions can offer you, especially when it comes to the type of fit that you're looking for. Um, but we really want to remind you when it comes to college fit, the most important thing to keep in mind is to make sure it feels right for you. Um, so everyone has different criteria for what's going to be the best fit for them. And I'm a big proponent that once you know which college is for you, you get that feeling. You get those little butterflies and you know that you want this to be your home. Um, so regardless of what everyone else says around you, make sure your college is the best fit for you. Um, now, of course, these are pretty unprecedented times. Um, typically, we say the get, best way to kind of get an idea of that college is going to be the best fit for you is to visit the campus. Um, but unfortunately, not all of our institutions are offering in-person visits at this time. Um, but that doesn't mean that you still can't get an idea if it's going to be the best fit or do your research on your you know, particular institutions. Um, we definitely encourage you to seek out virtual visit opportunities to continue to learn about our different institutions or any other institution that may not be represented today to know if it's going to be the best fit for you. Um, I'm also a big proponent of joining mailing lists and following institutions on social media, especially with social media. Sometimes you get the idea of what campus life and the student experience is like directly from the students that are at that institution. Um, so those are great ways to continue to research and figure out if a college is going to be the best fit for you. And I know we presented a lot of information for you guys today. Um, so we just want to pop up a quick table to really highlight those differences between all of our different institutions when it comes to those small, medium, and large institutions. And once again, hopefully this helps you kind of figure out what's going to be the best fit for you. Um, my recommendation for students too, as you are comparing institutions and trying to figure out which one you want to pursue your education at, make a table like we have. Um, this is a great way to quickly compare institutions and, and really helps you articulate what's gonna be the most important to you um, in figuring out where you wanna pursue your education. Um, so definitely make a table and do your research and it will only benefit you throughout the college search and application process. Um, but with that being said, that is all the information that we have for you guys today. Um, so we are going to officially open up the Q&A box. So any questions that you have, feel free to put your questions in the Q&A box and Nancy will be reading those aloud for our entire group to answer. So definitely go ahead and ask those questions. Um, we really want to share any kind of information, even if it's not about our individual institution, if it's about your college admissions journey in general. Um, a lot of us have a extensive experience in that, and so we're happy to help you as you start on this college search. So um, one of the things we can share is what our admissions criteria is for a transfer student. So at UNC Pembroke, um, we require that you have a 2.0 GPA, and if you're under the age of 21, you need 24 transferable college credits or we'll have to review your high school information. So you'll wanna send that high school transcript as well since the UNC system is test optional this year. If you're over the age of 21, then you just need that cumulative 2.0 GPA. At Elizabeth City State, we're similar to UNC Pembroke. Our GPA requirement is a 2.0 cumulative GPA. You have to have 24 transferable credit hours. If you're over 21, you just have to have the 2.0 GPA, cumulative GPA. Um, if you're under 21, we will need, and you don't have the 24 transferable credit hours, we'll also need to look at your official high school transcript for processing. 
Awesome, and NC State is just a little bit different. Um, so in order to be considered a competitive applicant, we would encourage that you have at least 30 transferable credit hours completed at the time that you submit your application to NC State. Um, with at least a minimum or uh, with at least a 3.0 cumulative GPA. And um, that GPA recommendation can vary amongst colleges, but that's typically what we would consider to be competitive. Um, now, the most important thing to know about NC State's transfer application process is that we are a major dependent institution. Therefore, you will be applying directly to your academic program of choice upon admission, and you will be evaluated for admissions purposes based on your intended major. Um, with our academic colleges, each college has their own recommendations for competitive applicants. Um, so a GPA threshold and coursework that they would like to see completed. Um, so you can become the most competitive applicant in their admissions process. Um, now being competitive does not ensure or guarantee admissions, but it does put you in the best position. Um, I always encourage students to do your research before applying because those recommendations really do vary among colleges. Um, so one quick example of how recommendations can vary. Um, so our Poole College of Management to be considered a competitive applicant is those 30 credit hours, um, a 3.0 cumulative GPA, college English and college calculus. So pretty simplistic. But for our College of Engineering, you need at least a 3.0 cumulative GPA, but 3.5 is considered the most competitive. Um, 30 hours, uh, English composition, calculus one, calculus two, calc based physics, and a college level chemistry. So vastly different recommendations um, to do your research first to ensure that you can be a competitive applicant for NC State's admissions process. Thank you. All right. And we, our first question is, can you provide some examples of the tutoring or learning center type programs that are available? Um, so at UNC Pembroke, we have a Center for Student Success, which offers um, our first semester advising and also advising for any undecided students where they can help students with career services and determining what their major should be. And then they also offer a tutoring program um, in all subject areas. Uh, so that's a great resource for you. We also have our um, care team on campus, which can provide additional resources if a student maybe is not struggling necessarily with the subject material, but perhaps something like test anxiety or things like that that can help improve their learning Learning. They can give you strategies and things like that to help you. Um, and so those are the options we have, as well as um, our first semester composition can also include a writing lab to help with that, um, as well as a math lab. And at Elizabeth City State, we do offer tutoring services under our academic support. Um, our academic support services offers tutoring and our learning centers. Um, once you transfer in, you'll be assigned a transfer advisor, which will assist you throughout the process. And she also actually works with you to make the tutoring and learning centers available to you. And NC State offers very similar resources. Um, that is through our Academic Success Center, which is located in DH Hill Library. And um, so that's where you can find our supplemental instruction, our tutoring center, and our writing center for students. Um, of course, those are just kind of our general institutional resources. But one thing that I love about NC State is that we really break it down further into your individual academic college. Um, so each of our academic colleges do provide their own um, tutoring services and just academic success services for their students as it relates to their curriculums and majors and coursework that their students are involved with. Um, and then, of course, each of our students who are at NC State are assigned an academic advisor um, upon enrollment in their particular academic program of choice. And that academic advisor is here to support you and make sure that you are staying on track and being successful in your courses and really having a successful student experience at NC State. Thank you. Our next question um, is actually about freshman students. Um, are freshmen matched up with an older student as a peer for the first year or first semester? Um, so at UNC Pembroke, we do have a peer mentor program. Um, so all of our first year students are um, matched up with a peer mentor that's been trained that goes through their freshman seminar class. Um, and so they will meet with that student and help them adjust to campus during that first year.
At NC State, we don't have kind of an institution-wide peer mentoring program, at least not to my knowledge. That could be one of those 700 different student organizations, but I don't know the full list. Um, but I do know that some of our academic colleges do have peer mentoring programs within their particular college. Um, once again, to provide that really um, kind of specific and touch point um, mentoring with students who are in similar academic programs. Um, so I know our College of Agriculture and Life Sciences has that, I believe our Poole College of Management and maybe our College of Engineering. Um, so I would definitely look into your academic college to see if that's a resource that they offer for you. Um, at Elizabeth City State, we do offer the academic, um, under our Academic Services Support Center, we do actually offer peer tutorial, the peer tutorial program um, you are matched, you aren't matched up, but we do offer the peer tutorial program and under the academic support center. All right, and our next question, uh, what would you say makes your institution the most unique? Uh, so I guess at UNC Pembroke, I feel like our um, heritage makes us a very unique institution. Our American Indian heritage is really woven in through our institution and um, our relationship with the town of Pembroke, um, where it's very, the institution is part of the town. So um, even though we're in a small town, um, that actually is a really great experience for students because we're so close knit there. So I think that that's being, our size and then having a lot of resources, we really integrate well in our community. And then we have that heritage aspect. So if you're not super familiar with American Indian um, heritage, it's a really great experience to be here and engage with that culture. I would say if at Elizabeth State it's our location. Um, we're in a rural, rural area but we're on the border of Virginia Beach, Virginia. So you can go swimming and um, you have a little city life, but we're also on the border of Nags Head where you actually, you have the Outer Banks lifestyle and we're, you can actually be laid back or you can also have the city life. So I think it's our location. Yeah, I would say it kind of, that's too prong for me. So I think our location is kind of unique. I mean, there are other institutions in Raleigh, um, but in comparison to the vast amount of, you know, institutions in North Carolina, I think our proximity to downtown Raleigh and how involved our students are within our city is really great. Um, one thing that I love about NC State and our location for transfer students is the longevity that you can have in Raleigh. And um, so, of course, you will be relocating to our campus to pursue our academic programs. And then you may not want to leave again after graduation. You may want to spend more than two years in Raleigh, and you can do that. Um, Raleigh is home to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different businesses, corporations, and organizations that span so many different academic disciplines um, that our students are able to find professional opportunities within Raleigh. And you can really have that longevity and really lay roots in our city and really build your community in our city. Um, so that's one piece I love. And then the other piece, of course, is our academic programs. I think that makes us so unique. Um, we offer some really unique programs that I always encourage our students to look into, um, such as like poultry science, uh, medical textiles, textile engineering, paper and science engineering. I mean, there are so many niche programs on our campus that have really fruitful employment opportunities, but then also if you're considering a graduate program that can really help differentiate yourself amongst that more competitive graduate program. So um, definitely look at all those unique niche programs and I promise you, you won't regret it. All right, so it doesn't look like we have any more questions in the chat right now, but um, go ahead and keep thinking of them because we've got about five minutes left. Um, but this slide um, shows our contact information and how to get in touch with our individual offices. Um, and then, of course, our transfer specific websites and how to visit. Um, UNC Pembroke is currently offering on campus tours um, in a COVID safe manner. So if you are interested in visiting, like Courtney suggested, um, you can visit us in person or we also have virtual visit options. Um, so if everyone else wants to speak a second on how to visit or how to get in touch, please do so. 
Awesome. I can talk about NC State real quick. Um, so unlike our colleagues at UNCP, we are not offering any in-person visits at this time. Um, technically, our campus is open since we are a public institution. So you're welcome to walk around if you want, but there is no formal campus tour organized through our Office of Admissions. Um, and I would say vast majority of our buildings are actually closed at this time because we do not have students on campus. Um, so you can walk around if you want to, but no formalized tour. Um, most of our, our visit opportunities are going to be virtual. Um, you can definitely visit our transfer student website and our transfer or campus visit website. Um, with our virtual visit opportunities, we are offering transfer information sessions. We offer topic specific sessions that really focus on our academic department and student resource offices, such as our academic success center and our libraries on campus. Um, we offer student chats where you can talk to other NC State students to learn more about their experience. Um, we do offer a live virtual tour so you can walk through our campus virtually with one of our student ambassadors and then we do also offer um, one on one virtual appointments um, with our admission staff should you want to talk about pursuing your education at NC State or our, your, our application process. Um, one thing that I did forget to mention that I do want to make a plug for um, is that for our fall enrollment, um, for our fall application deadline, so fall 2021, that application deadline is February 15th. Um, so if you're interested in applying to NC State for fall enrollment, February 15th will be your application deadline. At ECSU, we actually only offer virtual tours at this moment. Um, you can go to our website at www.ecsu.edu to view our visit um, schedule. Um, right now, we do offer Transfer Tuesdays, where every Tuesday from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., we offer sessions for transfer students that you can talk about anything. We can um, we tell you about the transfer requirements, um, the university, and we answer any questions that you have regarding the university or your application. You can always reach us at um, on our website or on our transfer admissions website. Um, you can reach us at transfer at ecsu.edu with any questions that you have, and we're always happy to assist. All right. Well, thank you all for participating today. Um, I think we had a great session um, with some good questions. And um, if you do have another one, you have just a couple minutes to throw it in the chat. Um, but if not, we really appreciate you participating. Um, and we hope that you find your college fit on this journey. And I will make a little plug. Um, so if you are interested in learning more in-depth information about any of our institutions, I know for NC State, we are offering an NC State specific information session um, through this virtual transfer tour programming on November 2nd. Um, so if you wanna to continue to learn more about our institution and our transfer process, I definitely encourage you to sign up for that information session. Um, and Sherry and Nancy, are you guys also offering an institution specific information session? Yes, our information session is on October 29th at 10 a.m. So definitely sign up for that. Even if you can't attend our session in person, it's great to go ahead and register. That way um, you'll um, be added to our mailing list and get updates from that session. We can send you the recording. I'm actually not sure if we have an information session. So I'm gonna re put that out to Mr. Ewer to see if we actually have an information session. <laughs> And so, um, as Sherry mentioned, um, Ms. Franks mentioned prior, we do an information session every Tuesday um, for transfer students. So, but if you have any questions, you can reach out to us at um, either admissions at ECS, ecsu.edu or transfers at ecsu.edu. Certainly, if you're an applicant, um, chances are you've already received the email, you know, inviting you to participate. But that's to any student, whether you're a um, prospective student or whether you've already applied. We do encourage you to visit our website and you can schedule. Um, our transfer to the session. All right, well, thank y'all. I'm gonna turn it back over to our CACRO facilitator. Thank you to our presenters, phenomenal job. Thank you. Again, 
Thank you all for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide us. Also, this was just one of the many sessions being hosted, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions again at CACRAO.org, again, CACRO.org. And in about a week, you'll be able to find the session's recording as well as all the other session recordings at CACRO.org. Again, thank you for participation and have a wonderful day.